lovelies, I hope you're all well. So today we're going to make some printable fabric bunting. Now for our actual bunting, we're using actual fabric. For our text, so our Merry Christmas I'm going to put on the bunting, we're going to use Cricut printable fabric today and we're going to use it as a plique. But I'm going to explain all of this to you. So initially we're going to use just normal cotton fabric. So you can see I've got lots of triangles here. So I've got my red triangles. Now my red triangles are going to be the front of my bunting and this is going to be my patterned fabric. My black or grey triangles are the back of my bunting and they are going to be just a plain fabric. So you'll notice that my grey triangles are all sat in each other and this is to maximise space. So I've already come in and attached these and this is so I can get more cuts of the back of the bunting on each 12 by 24 mat of fabric. However, with my red ones, I can't have an extra triangle sat in there. The reason for this is because my pattern is going one way. If I had a pattern that was going all over the place, it would be fine. If I was just using a plain fabric, I could have this set up. But because my fabric pattern is going all in one direction, my triangles have to go in one direction. I've made each of my triangles a width of 4.5 inches by 7.5 inches in height. And I've also worked out how many I can get on each mat. So we're just going to attach this. But of course you can make your bunting any size that you want to. And I've literally just used normal triangles for this. For my text I've used the font Better Together and you can see I've got all my text here. I have attached it for the purposes of my layers but I'm just going to detach it all and it will become clear why I've got all my letters individually placed. So I'm going to come in and I want to actually change them from a cut to a print and I'm going to do that for all of them. So for our text, we are going to be using Cricut printable fabric today. And we're going to use it to applique each of these letters onto a piece of fabric bunting. So I want to go and get some pattern fill. If you don't know how to do this, I'm very, very quickly going to show you. So I've just come in to Design Bundles and got a Christmas digital paper pack, but you could use any kind of background, uh, anything that's kind of got a pattern to it. Once it's downloaded onto my computer, I can go to Upload. I'm going to Upload Pattern. I'm going to Browse. Let's just click one of the patterns. So our pattern then comes in and you can obviously name and tag the pattern and you can also change the theme if you want to. We're just going to save it. Once it's saved we can then click on our letter. We can go to patterns because we've already changed it to a print. And then you can see that we can choose our different patterns. So I'm just going to choose this one and I'm going to make all of them the same pattern. And you just do that by clicking the letter, going to patterns, and just keep choosing the pattern that you want. So unlike with my triangles where I've attached them all together to make sure I maximise space, I'm going to leave these all individual. The reason why is obviously there are limitations to print and cut and if I come in and attach this together and then attach the Christmas together, I'm going to struggle to maximise my space. So if I leave them all individually, as you'll see in a minute, I'll actually get a lot of them onto one sheet. I think I'm left with two. But of course you can play with the sizes. So I'm just going to bring my fabric back as well and we can then go to make it. 
So you can see I've got my print and cut here and then I've just got a small area here. But, but of course I could use this excess or I could make my text smaller and get it all onto one sheet if I wanted. The same with my fabric, it's a little bit too long to get an extra set on here uh, so I could actually make my triangle smaller in height but this is all things that we can play with and you can work out for yourselves. I want them this specific size and that's how I want it so I'm happy to go ahead with it the way it is but if you want to really maximise your space you'll just have to make the height slightly smaller. So remember that this is our plain fabric and this is our patterned fabric. We can then go to continue. So I am using my maker today with my rotary blade. If you wanted to do this on your air machine, you can. You'll just need to remember that you need to obviously bond the backing of your fabric so that it's got a layer of bonding behind it. And of course, you'll be able to use the printable fabric as well. So for my printable fabric, we will of course be sending to our printer. I'm then going to browse all materials. I'm going to come down to fabric. And then you can see we've got printable fabric and it's got the little Cricut logo next to it to show us that it is a Cricut product. And you just need your fine point blade to cut the printable fabric. For both my fabric mats, so mats three and four, I'm just going to be using cotton. So I'm just going to go to popular and I'm just going to choose fabric and cotton. And of course, I will be using my rotary blade. So we've cut out all of our bunting pieces now in fabric and I've got some of the Cricut printable fabric. So we've got our bunting laid out here and we've got our printable fabric which we've already cut out and if we peel it back you'll see that it's got a sticky residue on it. There's a few reasons for this. The first reason is it means you can put it onto cards and things so it's adhesive which is great and the second reason is when we put it onto fabric it's going to hold it onto the fabric. Now it's not going to hold it enough that it stays on there permanently but what it is going to allow us to do is actually applique it onto the fabric. So applique is when we put a piece of fabric on top of another piece of fabric and we then create a stitch all the way around and this is what printable fabric allows you to do. Because it's sticky it will hold it in place for us but as I say it also means we can put it onto card and things and we don't have to use glue because it's already adhesive. So now that they're all attached, what we can do is we can just come in with a zigzag stitch and go all the way round and just create a beautiful applique.
So once we've added on our printable fabric and we've appliqued it onto the front of our bunting, we're going to get one of our back bunting pieces and we're going to place them so that the front and the front of the back are on top of each other. We're then going to sew down both sides but we're going to leave the top open so you only want to sew down the two sides. So I just want to show you a little bit better, we've turned our bunting inside out and if you get something quite thin uh, and quite thin at the end you can then just help push your fabric through to get that nice point at the end. So at this point I like to come in with my easy press and just press my bunting. I just have it set to 305 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 seconds and it's just to give it a nice press. just about finished. The only thing I need to add is my bias binding. So you can get bias binding from any good craft store, sewing store, you can pick it up from Hobby Craft. So you can see the bias binding has got two flaps to it and then on the front it's completely solid. So it allows us to actually fold it over. So you're going to get your piece of bunting and you're going to get your bias binding and you're just going to fold it so that your bunting sits in it. With the tail end you're going to sew that as well so you're just going to sew your bias binding in half and you're going to keep adding your bunting pieces onto it. And how much of a gap you have is completely up to you. Some people like no gap, some people like to have a larger gap, it's completely up to yourself. <laughs> 